Are you looking for a really straightforward and simple hologram for your uh, scenes? Well, look no further. This is really basic. Probably scrap it together in fact five minutes and it's very, very customizable. So stay tuned. Okay, so before we uh, kick off on today's tutorial, I just want to say an absolutely massive thank you to uh, to everyone who uh, enjoyed and watched and uh, even subscribed the uh, the last video. Uh, I was absolutely astonished uh, because I uploaded that video and then went off on holiday, uh, thinking, "Oh well, we'll get a few views out of it," and uh, suddenly it was up over a thousand views which absolutely dwarfs everything else i've done uh certainly recently so a big thank you to everyone um it's obviously clearly obvious that uh uh the biggest hurdle to my own channel is myself because i was away from screen for about three weeks i wasn't really promoting it very hard at all um so yes i, I think i need to launch these videos and then go off on holiday um Again, thank you very much. Uh, fantastic, fantastic result that. Um, again, if you uh, if you enjoyed this video, uh, then I do hope you uh, you do give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing. Uh, I'm always more interested to see if uh, people use uh, any of these tutorials to make their own stuff. So uh, if you do, then uh, please upload your data, upload your video rather, or your, your images. Um, I find ArtStation's best. You can find a link for it in the description. And uh, drop a comment just to say where it is. And uh, yeah, I'd love to see it. But uh, again, thank you very very much and uh, let's crack on with today's tutorial okay, so for today's example we're using a uh, latest version of blender which is 3.3 uh, it's quite straightforward this one so it should work quite well on uh, previous versions of blender so if you want to update great uh, if not don't worry about it if you want the latest one it's for free to download on blender.org so let's go straight into our scene. And those who follow the channel know I do not like doing this. I don't like deleting the default cube, but we don't need one today. So let's get rid of it. Instead, let's leave it, uh, replace it even with Suzanne, or if you're not familiar with the lingo, a monkey. So there's Suzanne, and we want a bit of detail to her. So let's press a few buttons. Uh, we want a subdivision modifier. And we'll smooth it out. It doesn't really make a tremendous amount of difference, but I find that smoother looks better on this. Uh, so, you know, as I say, feel free to muck you around with it. Uh, let's see, and then we go straight into the shaded tab and we want a new material. Let's move this up here because this is the kind of the important bit. I'm going to change this to hologram blue. Take the principal BDF and we delete that. And what we're going to do is we're going to create our hollow effect. Let's move this up so you can actually see it. So we want a mix shader. Well, we do need an emission. I clicked on that by accident, but we do need a mix shader first. So mix shader into surface. Plug the emission into here. And we want a transparent as well. So you can, you can see through it. Okay. And... Boronoi texture. Plug that into there. Now, if you've got no drag on the switched on, it's Control T. If you haven't, go into Edit. Um, in fact, let's just do it now. Edit Preferences, Add-ons, up here, No Wrangler. Make sure it's turned on because it isn't turned on when you download. I don't know why Blender do this because so many people just use No Wrangler, so you might as well have it switched on. Um, but this, they seem to do that. Right then, let's uh, put that up to here. Let's just slide the other way. We'll have both of them a second ago. Now we're going to move them up to here. And what we want to do, so obviously it's not looking very hologrammy at the moment, is we want a color ramp. Plug that into there. If I start bringing this down, you can start to see some of the detail take take shape. So we want to bring it fairly low create that hologram we go zero on these scales but then we crank z up quite high that to be pretty high fact i found as well get a bit more going on here as well 
So that is your kind of lines. We want to go into here as well, actually. Under materials, I want to turn blend mode into alpha blend. And then switch that to kind of blue. This will be the color of your hologram. And crank this up to something like 20. There you go. Let's go to background mode and turn the background to zero. Make it black. Okay. Let's turn that up a bit higher. There we go. So that's your kind of general line effect. You can have a, a, a bit of detail to it by having a noise texture in there as well. Make that zero. Let's quickly animate this. Let's just see what happens. Timeline. Once it's set to zero, uh, insert keyframe, and then just type in two fifty there. So that's ten seconds worth. And we want to make that one. I find the higher these numbers are, the or rather the greater the range between two points for ten seconds, the faster it goes. We don't want it to go too quick. In fact, you can spot there that I've completely forgotten to do something. Let's go into that. So we click that, we click that, and we go into down here. Extrapolation mode, we want it to be linear. So by default, it's kind of got a smoothed effect to it. Um, I always use linear. I don't know of anyone who uses the kind of smoothed effect. Um, not to say they don't do it. So at the moment, that's pretty hard to see. It's because it's trying to render at the same time. Let's see if it's any easier. It only really sticks out when you actually render it properly. Let's bring that down a bit further. Oh, it's too far, too far, too far. Bring it back. There we go. You can always adjust it here. There's lots of options you can use. Can even make it 50. But you know what? That doesn't look too bad. Actually, having that at 50. Let's stick with. Let's stick with 50. Play around with some of these, some of these settings a little bit. Okay, so that's a kind of um, horizontal uh, effect there. We have turned. Oh, we haven't turned bloom on. So if we turn bloom on, hmm, ambient occlusion and subspace. There we go. It's, it's tricky to see at this stage, but it does. It does make an effect. There we go. It's really, when it's animated, do we really see it? So I tell you, what, let's leave that at fifty. And then what we want to do is we want to do something very similar, but we want to use verticals. So Shift D. Want to do an add. Shader, so not mix, add. Plant that one into the top one. So two identicals. But now what I want to do is 50 and 0. Oh, yes, and we need, that's why. And we just need to plant that one into here. That one into there. There we go. Now that's that's looking pretty good. Uh, and by itself, it doesn't look too bad, but you, it's not really capturing the kind of holographic effect. So to to add that, what we're going to do is we're going to add a fresnel. And what we're going to do, how we're going to do that even, is we're going to add another shader. Find that one into there. Kill that. 
Now what we want to do is add a mix shader. That one to that one. Uh, we want an emission. Now normally I'd say use the same emission, but I've found that you do need to have a slightly different strength on this one. So we're going to copy the hex code from this. But we're going to have it a different value in the strength. So yeah, that looks okay, but it's it's not it's not great that one. Uh, let's bend that twenty five. There you go. Yeah, so it's completely blurred out all our work. But what we're going to do is add a Fresnel. What that Fresnel is going to do is give it a kind of edging effect. So if I plan that straight to there, you can just about see it. But we can use the magic of color ramp. Now, for this to work, we need to swap these around a little bit. There we go. So what we're going for is, uh, oh no, I don't want to move you. I want to drag this down, change this number. There you go. So what I did there was I changed the AOR to 1.01. .01. And what we're doing is we're dragging this down. That just kind of gives it more detail. So any direction you look at this now, this starts to look a bit more hologrammatical, if that's even a word. Now then, one last thing we need to do is we need to go to one, insert keyframe, and that one as well. Uh, go to last time step, insert keyframe. Uh, let's go to camera. And what we're going to do now is we're going to render it. It won't take very long, but actually let's just render image first off. So very quick, less than a second. And that's looking pretty good. But obviously still image on holograms. They don't they're not too brilliant. Um they actually look a bit stale. So the 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 real magic is when we animate it. So let's hit the go button now. Okay, so that didn't quite go to plan, so let's shift a couple of these settings around. Maybe we'll prevent that 50, and that 50. Okay, let's just change a few numbers here and there. Eventually we'll get it right. Okay, so that seems to work, and we can spend uh, a lot of time mucking around with these numbers and uh, and getting it to uh, get it to animate just the way you want. You can maybe make this a little less going on here, and make that one a little bit less as well. Let's play around with some numbers, but again, make it your own. One more thing we're going to do to this though before we we call it done. Is this Fresnel? It stays static, which is it's all well and good, but it doesn't really give it much detail. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a bit of detail to this strength. But one way of doing it, you could go into uh, this bit here, the um, timeline editor, and you could change this number. It's very OK. Yeah, you could do that. It's very mechanical, though. What I prefer to do is if we go back to zero or one or whatever, insert a keyframe. And then just make sure you've got these selected. And then it seems to work best when you go into the main layout. And what you can do is you can add a modifier. And uh, it's actually really cool to do this. So I want to go into here, modifier, add a modifier, and uh, built in function. So let's see what our options are. Da, da, da. No, it's not in that one. Bear with me. It's in noise. That's the one I was looking for. And uh, what we want to do now is just play around with these numbers. 
Um, so I'm going to scale to 10. There we go. Strength wheel over there. That want to give it a bit of bit of this. Modifier. So essentially what we're doing is we're adding a noise. So it'll follow this number as well. You can see it's very bouncy. And with holograms, we kind of want it to look um, a bit bouncy. So let's uh, add more stuff to it. Just make it as busy or as not so busy as you like. Um, the awkward thing is, of course, that you don't really really capture it until you really render it so let's let's leave it like that and then let's try and render that one more time and uh, yeah we'll see what uh, see what that does So uh, here we have our final renders, and as you can see, uh, you can change the colors, you can change a few bits and pieces about them and get some slightly cool differing effects. Uh, to get this kind of conical effect to the bottom of the, um, of the uh, Su Suzannes, uh, that was really achieved with just uh, a bit of um, a gradient texture, added with a little bit of noise. But uh, have, certainly have a play. And uh, yeah, if you create your own, um, as always, please uh, please do drop a comment with a link. Um, and uh, yeah, just, just share your work. And always love to see what uh, what people do with these uh, tutorials. So uh, so yeah, cool. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So thank you very much for, uh, for following. And uh, I hope you all enjoyed this and get to use this at some point in your own projects. Uh, as I say, share a link. And um, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Thank you very much. Cheers.